What's going on guys? I am back and we got some new CPU parts to test. So this is the uh, Ryzen 5 1600 that I picked up uh, not too long ago. I actually got this a couple days after the uh, chips were released from uh, B&H, but uh, I haven't had time to play with it really that much because I've still been doing some testing on my uh, 1700, which is in this build here. You guys have already seen the uh, videos on that. Um, I'm kind of done messing with it for now until I get, uh, I want to get some more RAM so that I can dial in a final overclock and uh, and then we'll uh, make our way back to that one. But for now, I'm gonna do some testing with the 1600. I actually wanna do a complete build with this with a uh, new graphics card, uh, motherboard, case, power supply, all that crap. So uh, hopefully I'll get to do that soon, but for now I just wanna do some uh, preliminary testing and uh, you know just kinda see how it compares to the 1700 and maybe some other processors that I have uh, lying around here. So this is the actual chip itself. I don't know if that's gonna be in focus or not, but uh, yeah, 1600 there, Ryzen 5 1600. Sticker's important, that adds uh, extra frames to your uh, gaming, so definitely gotta have that. And then we got the uh, CPU cooler here as well. So. My 1700 actually didn't come with a CPU cooler since it was a press sample. This is actual uh, retail chips, so we get all of those goodies here. So I got this. I may do some testing on this. Um, I do have some other CPU coolers in my possession that I do plan on testing with these uh, Ryzen chips just to see how they perform. Got a couple from Noctua, a couple from Be Quiet, or I shouldn't say a couple, one from Be Quiet, and uh, and then I may be getting one from Cooler Master as well. So we're gonna test that um, and see how they perform on an overclocked uh, 1600. So that's kind of the plans now. So I'm gonna throw this chip until I get that uh, figured out into this system here and uh, let the preliminary benchmarks begin. So first step, Throw CPU and CPU cooler into system. Ugh. All right, so she's in there. The uh, 1600 is installed. Got the uh, stock AMD cooler on there as well. Not a bad looking little cooler for uh, being stock. So we're gonna rock with this for a little bit. Um, also the graphics card here, you guys can ignore. I've got that just to uh, monitor things here for the time being. That's gonna get swapped out for my 1070 once my uh, benchmarks actually begin. So uh, yeah, with that said, I guess uh, it's time to get testing. All right guys, so I've been running with the Ryzen 5 1600 for about a week now. I've got it overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, and I've run a few benchmarks here, and what I've decided actually is that I'm gonna compare it to the 1700 at stock settings and see just how close we can get performance-wise to that chip. I know some of you guys have been on the fence about whether you should uh, go with the 1600 or make the step to the 1700, so hopefully these benchmarks will answer that for you. So just a quick note here, I am running the uh, GTX 1070 uh, without an overclock. However, I have increased the uh, power limit to 120% as well as uh, increase the core voltage to plus a hundred percent. Now let's start with the productivity benchmark. So uh, starting with Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017, I took some uh, 4K GH5 test footage, uh, about 40 seconds worth, uh, enabled one LUT, and then rendered it at uh, 1080p using the uh, YouTube preset. So thanks to Newman Films by the way for this footage since I don't actually own a GH5 myself. But anyway, for a CPU based render, the 1600 took 1 minute and 17 seconds and the 1700 took 1 minute and 14 seconds. Now switching to a GPU based render, it took the 1600 37.66 seconds while it took the 1700 just 36 seconds. I'm guessing there is still some uh, CPU being used in the actual render, at least for this particular project as uh, I would actually have expected the 1600 to outperform the 1700 here being that it's overclocked. Now moving on to Blender, we do get some more predictable results here. So this is using the uh, BMW benchmark, which is available as a, a demo file on their website. So for the 1600, it took uh, for a CPU based render, six minutes and 29 seconds, while it took the 1700, five minutes and 45 seconds. So we can see there, the additional cores do still provide a noticeable performance gain. Now when we switch to GPU-based rendering, it is a little bit closer. 
and actually the 1600 build out uh, paces the 1700 just barely at uh, 3 minutes and 9 seconds versus 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Now moving on to Cinebench, this uses your CPU cores to render a, a 3D photorealistic image. In this case, the multi-threaded test scored 1225 for the 1600 and 1395 for the 1700. So we can still see here the extra cores do provide, of course, a performance boost over the 1600. Now when it comes to the single-threaded test, the 1600 scored 154 versus 130 for the 1700. So we can see the benefits of the frequency increase here. Now moving on to the ASUS RealBench test suite, we're using the uh, GIMP image editing benchmark. What this does is simulate a, a uh, image editing workflow. So it'll open up various photos and apply filters to them and then calculate how long it takes to complete that process. So this particular test relies on single threaded and RAM performance. So for the 1600, it took 36.39 seconds. And for the 1700, it took 36.92. Now also in RealBench, we ran the H.264 video encoding benchmark, which uses Handbrake to encode a 1080p file. In this case, the more cores you have, the better the performance. As you can see here, the 1600 takes 41.24 seconds, while the 1700 only takes 36.30 seconds. So we can kind of see here where the 1600 has the edge in the uh, frequency versus the 1700, which will have the edge when more cores are required. Now let's move on to some gaming benchmarks. So starting with Battlefield 1 on the uh, Storm of Steel map, we are using a uh, DX11 high preset, uh, GPU memory restriction off, and at uh, 1080p, the 1600 had a minimum frame rate of 73.77 and an average frame rate of 132.58. Now for the 1700, we had a minimum frame rate of 72.17 and an average frame rate of 130.65. So the 1600 just barely edges it out there. Now moving on to Dishonored 2 on the Karnaka docks using the Ultra preset, uh, an FOV of 90 and adaptive resolution off. Also at 1080p, we had a minimum frame rate of 42.51 for the 1600 and an average frame rate of 87.41. Now for the 1700, we had a minimum frame rate of 47.76 and an average frame rate of 90.47. Now this particular area is a little bit demanding, so the uh, frame rates can be somewhat kind of uh, wonky. So I wouldn't put too much stock into this, but it does appear that the 1700 does slightly outperform the 1600 in this scenario. Now, moving on to Doom on the Foundry map using the Vulcan API, high preset TSS AA on, and again at 1080p, the 1600 had a minimum frame rate of 123.18 and an average frame rate of 179.19 versus the 1700, which had a minimum frame rate of 121.98 and an average frame rate of 178.39. So slight victory for the 1600 there. Now moving on to a DX12 title, we have Forza Motorsport 6 Apex. So this is on the uh, Brands Hatch track indie circuit. Uh, this is using high settings, MSAA at 4X, and again, 1080p. 1600 had a minimum frame rate of 24.26 and an average frame rate of 120.26. Now for the 1700, we had a minimum frame rate of 17.43 and an average frame rate of 110.10. .10. So a pretty decent gain there for the uh, 1600. Looks like maybe that uh, increase in frequency is benefiting it in this particular title. Now, moving on to Grand Theft Auto 5, looks like we again do see some benefits from the uh, frequency increase. The 1600 had a minimum frame rate of 48.91 and an average frame rate of 114.20. While the 1700 had a minimum frame rate of 36.49 and an average frame rate of 106.47. By the way, this is using the uh, CAN benchmark on very high settings, MSAA at the Buy 2 and advanced graphics off at 1080p. And what I do is actually just average the uh, FPS of all of the scenes together. And that is how we come up with these values here. Now for the last benchmark, we are taking a look at uh, The Witcher 3. This is on the Nof Guardian connection, high preset, hair works off, post-processing on high, and 1080p resolution. So we had a minimum frame rate here of 35.53 for the 1600, and an average frame rate of 108.31. Now for the 1700, we had a minimum frame rate of 32.32, and an average frame rate of 107.58. So small gain there for the 1600. 
All right, guys, and that's pretty much the benchmarks here. So as you guys can see, it looks like in gaming, the 1600 win overclock does slightly edge out the 1700, which is uh, pretty nice. Also in productivity, I would say it holds its own. Obviously, it's not going to make up for the extra cores when you're in the blender or using handbrake or something like that. But if you're doing a little bit of uh, video editing, maybe some image editing, stuff like that, you may be able to get away with just uh, overclocking the 1600. So based on the results that we see here, I would say the 1600 is a pretty damn good value. Um, unless you have a specific need for those extra cores, I'd probably just stick with this. Now, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Am I off base here or are you seeing what I'm seeing here? I think the results speak for themselves, but obviously do you at the end of the day, if you can afford the 1700 hey why not but anyways guys that's pretty much it let me know again what you think down in the comments below don't forget to like this video if you like this type of uh, content subscribe if you haven't already and i'm out of here guys till next time see you